so um, the uh, it sounds like a boy band. Inside. Inside. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> What episode number is this? <laughs> I don't even know. Great start. <laughs> Let's Walk, go. Dive welcome in. To, Simon, why don't you introduce this one? Welcome to this episode of Dad Joke Medicine. We are so excited that we don't even know where we're at. What are we reviewing today? Paul? We're doing CFP Journal May 2024. That's right. So why don't we start with, as we always do, the cover critique for the CFP so Journal. What this reminds me of, I see all these different pills. It's the patients coming in and say, I'm on the blue pill, on the purple pill doc. You know which one that is. And I never do. No, I give them that look. I'm just like, you know that pill has like 50 generic forms? I have no clue. I'm so sorry. You just know that one small blue one. The small blue one? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't know about. what I'm talking about? Excellent. Nice I'm, I'm nice like answer. here on this map where I'm completely lost when it comes to medication. But you know what would be amazing? I always thought about I thought about this recently. I'm like, what if doctors had to take their own medication? Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a urologist? A bit of Flomax, a bit of Cialis? <laughs> oh, that's a you never know. Psych. Can you imagine a psychiatrist wakes up in the morning, has to take all the medications they're going to prescribe that day? Oh my gosh. I'm going to take the Zopiclone. I'm going to be asleep before <laughs> I even see my first patient. Cardiologist. I don't even think they'd make it to work. They'd be so hypotensive. That's incredible. So let's go on. Like, like there's some, there was a couple of good articles this month. What was your favorite one? Yeah. So uh, my favorite one is the migraine one for sure. So oh, that one gave me a... Headache. Big headache for that one. But uh, no, I got to say uh, that one is, I can sense it coming on. I, I can oh. feel. <laughs> Wait a second. I think you kind of had an aura. Yes. About, oh my God. Yes. No way. And that article is okay. not orable. I can oh. guarantee you right now. Come on. That, that was a good one. Slow clap slow to clap. start. Slow Amazing. Clap. So let's dive in. Now, I, I think I agree with you. Out of all the articles, this is a banger. Oh, we're going to start with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. So let's excited. start with it. So it's RX Files from Saskatchewan where I did my residency training. So two good things to come out of Saskatchewan, RX Files and myself. Medicare. Crickets. Crickets. Medicare. That's three. Come <laughs> on. So let's dive in. Come on. You got three authors, RX Files. They did some clinical detailing and they came up with 10 pearls. I think eight are real hits. Pounding pearls for migraines. Pounding pearls for migraines. Let's so, pound through it then. So there's actually some really useful clinical stuff in here. Yeah. Uh, when you've got a patient who is having migraines and they're going to come to you and they're going to complain about the medication. Yeah. They're going to say, I don't like this medication because, and this article is chock full of, of treatments and next steps we can do. Okay. So, so give me your top one out of the eight. You're going to start off with the long acting versus, so this, this was a little bit new to me, long acting versus short acting triptans. Yeah. There's two migraine triptans that you're going to avoid. Okay. And it's easy to remember. So uh, Frovatriptan. You're going to forget about that one. Okay. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> love it. Okay. And uh, naratriptan. What do you think about that one? Nara again. Nara again. Nara again. Nara, again. Nara's going to give naratriptan. And why is that? It's because they're slow acting and they take a long time to build up in the serum level. And it takes, what, sometimes even two or three hours before they kick in. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that's fair. And But there was a note here. Due to the longer half-life, frovatriptan and nara... I'm tripping over the words. <laughs> frovatriptan and naratriptan. <laughs> Nicely done. Wow. Have evidence for twice daily dosing in the prevention of menstrual migraine. So that's a unique indication. Maybe it'll show up on an exam or something. Which triptan would you choose? Exactly. And I think there's a second role for these. If the, the folks who they take their triptan and they're overwhelmed with nausea. They yeah. get the side effect before they get the effect. And so the good news is these slow-acting triptans are the long-acting triptans they're going to help you out with reducing those side effects. So important to get people to get these medications on board right away. One or two of these tips talks about that. When you talked about empty stomach, I immediately thought of number two. Number two? Yeah. The number two point, Simon. The second point. Oh, the, the second number two point. point. Yes. So this is a, it's not something I would have thought about. You would think like, you know, someone's got some migraine symptoms, nausea, and they think, oh, maybe I'll, you know, I'll snack on something. Taking NSAIDs on an empty stomach. No, that sounds, been, <laughs> that sounds like no it. practice. Yeah, I know. Because I'm like, oh, we, like reflex to almost say that to patients as part of their advice for the medication. Right, yeah. 30 minutes faster onset. So if you eat and have NSAIDs, it takes up to 60 minutes. So for our migraine patients who you're saying like, you know what, take some medication right away, whatever's available, maybe they don't have their prescription. Take the medication on empty stomach. NSAIDs will kick in about 30 minutes earlier, 30 minutes faster. That's amazing. That's a really practical pearl for it's NSAIDs. It's not been said before, or NSAID. <laughs> <laughs> You've said it here first. Hey, ooh. All right. Uh, so um, the, uh, it sounds like a boy band. NSAID. NSAID? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, all right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> There's some DUI jokes oh. in there that are very timely. That I'm I not feel like we're in sync right now. Oh, there it is. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so there, you were very excited about this other option for giving triptans. Uh, folks who, you know, they get nosebleeds after they get the intranasal. The pills take way too long. How do we help them? So this is because I wouldn't think about doing this in my community practice, but in the hospital, doing subcutaneous sumatriptan. Now the the cost there's a cost for the tablets, but in the ER maybe you know it's another option to think about subcutaneous sumatriptan. Exactly. You just you just love getting under people's skin, Ooh. don't you? <laughs> nice. Uh, there's some other amazing pearls here. So um, other this, than that one. That one was interesting. So in other medications, so metoclopramide, use it quite often in the ER, shows up in our power plans for migraine patients. But getting that to patients in the outpatient setting, so giving them a tablet, something I hadn't always thought about, but something to think about. Use it all the time in the ER, but not always in uh, in the clinic. Yeah, so giving them Maxaran, brand name generic, is going to be metoclopramide. Uh, the huge benefit of that is it slows down that gastric emptying. It gets rid of some of that nausea side effect of the migraine that they're, they're having anyways. Uh, and it turns out that uh, it boosts the effectiveness of the other analgesia. Amazing. And now we've talked a lot about the triptans already. What about your pants? I see you're not wearing any pants today. Well, you took Where my are your pants? pants off. So oh, I uh, took your <laughs> pants off. There's two kinds of your pants, I think, in Canada. Is there? Yeah. So there's, there, there's some that we use for prevention of migraines, and those, I believe, are injectable. And then there's other ones that we can use for treatment of migraine, especially in people who um, have really high risk for using triptans. We're talking about the cardiac patients. Okay, and so that's, that's one good thing to think about. But the other key point here was your risk of serotonin syndrome. Um, if the patients are, have a triptan and, and on an SSRI, is actually quite low. So something to mention to patients, but not as concerning, unless you're in an exam, then maybe you're going to say, watch out for serotonin syndrome. Yeah, and there is actually is one interaction that you really got to look out for. Which uh, one? That's MAOIs. Oh, you got to keep your enough. eyes on the MAOIs. Ooh. So MAOIs and triptans, that's going to trip you up on your exam uh, because uh, that is an absolute contraindication due to high risk of serotonin syndrome. Interesting. Do you teach medicine? I, I do, yeah. And I've also got three kids, which is why the dad jokes are just <laughs> rolling off the tongue right now. Like a uh, sublingual medication. A sublingual medication? Like what? Like, I don't like a, know. Which one are you thinking of? Are you thinking of what I'm thinking? <laughs> 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 Moving it, on. It slipped off. It was on the tip of my tongue, but it's yeah. gone now. Um, okay. There is a great option for Halloween, I find. Oh, yeah? The what? patient is having migraines and they want a medication to prevent it. Well, at Halloween, you're just going to give it out freely. All you give is candy at home. That's right. Candy Sartan. Really? Candy Sartan. Candy Sartan. Yeah. So they say add that to your list of migraine prophylaxis options. I mean, you know the rest of them on here. You know the uh, the ones that uh, you, you love. Oh, the ones that make me laugh out loud. The uh, LOLs. The, the propranolol. LOLs. <laughs> Propranolols, metoprolol. The world's funniest medication. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's the amitriptyline, the nortriptyline. Uh, there's a long list of options. So I always tell my patients, uh, you know, migraine can be a real pain. No pun intended there, but uh, <laughs> stick with it. There's lots of options to help you try and get over this. There's a great other website in here, migrainecanada.org slash diaries. I always tell my patients I want a written diary, what's been happening with your medications. So migrainecanada.org. It's a bit of a headache to spell it and get to the website, <laughs> but uh, site for sore eyes. I see what you did there. Ooh. Let's talk about so this diabetes calculator. Oh, let's go back. Yeah, yeah. Another great resource. So two great resources this, this month. So this is one I actually now, I pull this up with my patients when they come to talk to me about diabetes medications. Because no longer, and I'm, am I talking about some abstract, like, well, we'll get this number down on your blood test. Like, nobody yeah. cares about that. Some patients do. I have the occasional one who's like laser focused, more focused than I am on their hemoglobin A1C. And they, they, the problem is you got to be careful. You don't want to get it down to zero. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say like we have a we have a range we're going for not just the lowest hemoglobin a1c that you can get <laughs> so this is a really cool article because it's, it's hidden in the article it took me a little while to find it but there's a phenomenal calculator yeah and boom. i've started pulling this calculator up with my patients just like i do with the best cvd risk calculator from the same group and we punch in the variables yeah. and then we say what's important to you and there's actually a question there do you not want do you want to not have a stroke do you want to not have a heart attack or do you want to have normal pressure sensation on the bottom of your feet. 
Which you have to explain to patients, but that can be, I always have to check my patients when they come into the ER, diabetic, you want to get their socks off. My pro tip is always get your diabetic patients to wear white socks because when they take it off, they can see if there's a bleed or an ulcer on the white sock. It's a great pro. White sock lobby. <laughs> How many shares Paid do you have in yeah. the white sock industry? I don't know. I have a few pairs. Sorry. <laughs> a few a pairs, pairs of, of shares. Pairs of shares. <laughs> Worried about your, uh, your textile text that you've been receiving. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Come so on, let's sew it up. Pull up the uh, the calculator with your patient, and you ask what are your values, and then show them how this medication can change your variables. I'd be interested to hear what some pa- like how do patients really rank like heart attack versus stroke versus can't feel my feet. <laughs> I don't know. I'm intrigued. There'll be another study. There'll be another paper on that. Different we people. could be in the top fifty publishers, maybe. Oh, we'll come we, to that in a second, won't oh, we? I, I cannot wait Kept that for the to end. see your seething jealousy from the top 50 <laughs> researchers in Canada. There's some lists I want to be on and some I don't want to be on <laughs> as a physician. Um, let's talk about the cranberries. Oh, here we're talking about controversy. You talk about the sock lobby and the textile lobby. Yeah, what about Big Cranberry? Big Cranberry. Uh, and we're not talking just about the Irish rock band. Oh, we are talking about UTI prevention. That's right, urinary tract infection prevention. Uh, this is an update that is burning with urgency. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> burning with urgency? Did you just hide a dad joke within a dad joke? The double dad joke, yeah. It is an occult dad joke. <laughs> it's like an Ouija board dad joke. Um, do so, you have one? Like, so, so here, here's a real question. Do you, say, do you say this to your patients? Before you read this, if I took this article away, I came in with another UTI as a, as a female, uh, pregnant, maybe not, elderly, young. What would you say? What do you say? What, what about cranberry juice, Doc? Well, they've already heard taken about it. it. <laughs> By the yeah. time they see it, they've already had their... Say they've had 10, 10 UTIs. You've eliminated everything else. And you're like prophylactic antibiotics. They say, no, Doc, I want to try cranberry juice. What, well, you what can't do you say argue to with it. I mean, in vitro, the science is there. It shows okay. that there's reduced adherence of the bacteria on the bladder wall. I could just drop science on this. In vitro. <laughs> In vitro, in utero. What about... Uh, well, that's in, why I'm a in vitro in, in, VIP. In clinico. In clinico. How do we actually talk to them about Yeah, real uh, life. The problem is most cranberry formulations are full of sugar. Okay. You got your cranberry cocktail, your cranberry yeah. juices. And cranberry vodka. If you eat plain cranberries, it's just going to be just puckeringly sour. Like okay. eating any cocktail that you've ever made. It's just <laughs> like disgusting. I don't think I've ever had a straight up cranberry. That, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's because they taste awful. And so patients are not going to want to eat plain cranberries. And so probably the best formulation for minimizing all those problems is going to be the cranberry pills. So the cranberry pills, if your patients are asked, but still not great evidence. I think it was like 18 to 24%. There's a tiny reduction. You know what works better? What's that? Water. Oh, no kidding. So H2O. So yeah, drinking 1.5, is it one or one? Yeah, 1.5 liters causes, this is great. 1.5 less UTIs a year. Wow. I don't know what you remember. do with that 0.5 UTI. Like, is it or is it not? <laughs> you have it on like, it starts on December 28th. 28th, yeah. Half it's of just, it is you this have year. half a UTI. It's like having half the pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it there or not? not, see, not is or is not? Come on. Well, I'm sure your patients rounding. love you when you just tell them drink more water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Real, real good one. Um, you know, your UTI advice may be bad, but mine is bladder. The bladder, the better. A moment of silence for that. That <laughs> oh, was stunning. Right. Just like you were just that's like in shock. Stunning. How horrible that dad wow. joke was. But yeah, so so low dose antibiotics provide the most effective prophylaxis, but may be associated with some side effects. That's great. I think that we flushed this one out. Oof. That's let's good. go on. It's the end of that stream of consciousness oh, for the urinary stream. Let's stop this. <laughs> you cannot that one further. off. Okay. Oh. Moving on to. I'm gonna be up all night thinking about that one. <laughs> Moving away with urgency to this research article. Super quick one. This is brilliant. This is like this could be. This is like getting your resident research project done in a day. Now <laughs> that being said, they got five authors who did a Google search to find out who the 50 most cited primary care researchers in Canada were. Are you on the list? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, I didn't think no, so. I've, I've seen your research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, top 50 list. Uh, and they, they broke it down. You can see what's going on. If you know what, if you're listening to this podcast and on this list. Oh, wait a second. There's a very low no, likelihood. I'm pretty sure Dave Davis with uh, 18,551 so he... citations is probably writing more research and not listening to this exceptional podcast. 
I don't know. I'd, I'd want the player trading card for Brian H. Rowe. 27,155 total citations. There you go. And the, the number one university affiliation. Oh, where? I'm intrigued. McMaster. I'm going to bet it's McMaster. No, they're fifth. Oh, what? Yeah, let's get the rivalry oh, going. Oh, count this up then. Uh, I was going to go McMaster. Yeah, what's number four? You're not going to guess this one. University of Ottawa. No, Rules, they're Ottawa not Rules. even in the top no seven. Way. Oh, okay. Uh, number four is Western. Oh, home of family medicine. Okay, yeah. sure, but only four. Number three. So there's three more ahead. Oh, UBC, our oh. alma mater. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, Somehow yeah. they made it there despite having us on the <laughs> alumni list. <laughs> uh, number two, two? Uh, je ne sais quoi. Oh, McGill. You got it. Yeah, there you go. McGill. Okay. Number one number is number one? just on. who you think do, 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 it is do, 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 and who do. they think it is, too. University of Toronto? Yeah. Oh. Okay, moving on. Uh, next okay. topic. <laughs> what else? We're uh, done. We're almost done. There was a... advertising. Nothing interesting in the ad, is there? Uh, you know what? You know what? I always <laughs> love to have a look. I'm probably one of the few people that actually looks. It's always kind of going like, ah, what else is going on? But my favorite one, beautiful Oceanside, White Rock, BC. Locum and permanent positions available. Oh, what's interesting about working and then in White what's, Rock? What's interesting about it is then it lists four different ways to get out of town. <laughs> 45 minutes away from here, 10 minutes to the U.S., three hours to Seattle, wow. two hours to Whistler. So they're saying if you would rather be in the U.S., come work in White Rock. Come work in White Rock. There's lots of ways to get out of there. <laughs> that is amazing. amazing. Well, I think we've wrapped that one up for May 2024 CFP Journal. Some and that great is stuff in there. We had big cranberry. We had diabetes. And we had the seizure. Uh, sorry, uh, migraine. Migraines. Migraine. Great websites. A couple new ones. That's great. Until next month, Simon. This has been Dad Joke Medicine. We'll see you next time.